Buenos días. Hoy es viernes. That's my Spanish day. I greet you on Fridays, I think. So we're going through Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Why? There are seven letters to seven churches written by Jesus himself. And we are tackling maybe the hardest one to give commentary on and analyze. So let, we left off with uh, verse 19 of chapter 2. I know your deeds, your love, your faith, and service and perseverance. The Lord was encouraging them. I know everything you're doing. And now we pick up in the middle of the sentence, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. So here was growth. They weren't stagnant. In fact, there is a case to be made for the fact that nothing in spiritual life is stagnant. We're either growing stronger, bigger, better outreach, more love, more perseverance, or we're going backwards. There's no holding pattern. And he says, I've been watching everything, and you're doing now more. You're helping more people, serving more people, loving more people than you did at the beginning. You didn't just content yourself with a good start. What a great message for us today, if I touched on nothing else. Let's expand. Let's grow. Let's increase. This is about life. Life, when it's healthy, grows stronger. You know, if, if, a, if a little baby boy at two years old, he can only lift a few little things, if he's lifting that same amount when he's 19 years old, you go, time out, dude, something happened wrong here and you're growing up. No, look, I got these little blocks. Look how I can pick them up. Put the blocks down. You're 19. You're supposed to grow. More now than you had at the beginning. And now, fasten your seatbelt. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, and by her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Wow, that came out of nowhere. I know your love, your perseverance, this, and now it's more now than it was at the beginning. Nevertheless, see, it's a mixed bag. How can a church have all those good things, qualities, and the Lord commended them, and, and then we read that? Notice their, their fault here that he corrects them on is a false tolerance. You tolerate this Jezebel to teach. In the church, who is she? Well, let's go there. Who is she? Very few of the experts believe her name was actually Jezebel. But she was a woman up to no good in the church, claiming to be a prophetess. So what can we learn here and apply for today? Maybe he used the word Jezebel because she was like the Jezebel of the Old Testament. Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab. She was not a Jew. She was a Baal worshiper from the time she first screamed when she came out of her mother's womb. She led people into Baal worship, false idol, abomination to God. Connected with Baal worship with a lot of immorality. She got her husband, King Ahab, king of the northern uh, kingdom of, um, of Israel, uh, to, to go into Baal worship big time. Cunning, seducer, spiritually corrupt. You have someone in your church like that, and you permit her to teach. And her teaching leads to the same kind of misbehavior that, that is connected with, uh, with uh, Jezebel in the Old Testament. Sexual immorality and the corruption of idolatry. Now, remember, they were surrounded by the Roman Empire full of idolatry. So what was her teaching like? We don't know. What was she saying? It wasn't good. It was cunning. Maybe it was along the lines of, you can serve Jesus, but you can fool around over here with this and that. Who's to judge? Who's to say? Don't be narrow. Narrow. Sign of being educated is to be very broad. 
like you're into Jesus? Yeah, you're into Baal, you're into whatever the idols were of the Roman Empire. And it was having bad, bad effect on the church. And he faults them for tolerance. You would think toleration is a virtue in a lot of parts of our society. You tolerate anything and you're, that's a sign you're really great. But mothers, strangely, don't tolerate dirty food. In other words, they look in the refrigerator, oh, that milk. I remember when I was single, I didn't check dates. And one time I made some cereal and I poured some milk in it. Then when the milk came out of the container, the milk didn't just flow into the cereal. It kind of was doing like a, like a, um, a salsa dance. It was just like curdling in there. And I went, yeah. And I looked at the, uh, the date on the, on the milk. And the milk was like over by like 30 days. Who knew? I was just, yeah, let's put the stuff in there. No, that we don't tolerate. No, 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 you're not eating that. Don't eat that. Now we have no toleration. Like what? You're eating pork? Ah! Carbs? Yeah! That's full of sugar. That's white death. We're very careful in not tolerating that when it comes to other things, especially spiritually, morally. Come on, let it go. And they were faulted here by our Lord who said, no, narrow is better in this case. You don't let people teach false doctrine. How did they let her do that with all their other good qualities in that church? We don't know. But by her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Here's another thought for us today. She calls herself a prophetess. Was she a prophetess? No, she was a brujita. She's a witch. So that goes to show that what you confess and say about yourself doesn't mean anything if it's not true. Not everyone who calls himself a prophet, a prophetess, oh, you, we got to go hear this man. He says that he is a, a modern-day apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, and evangelist all wrapped up into one dude is heavy. That doesn't make them anything. We have to try the spirits. They were not trying the spirits. They might maybe were, were bamboozled by her advertising. The prophetess, Jezebel, give me a J, give me an E. Jesus said, no, I fault you. You don't let my people hear that teaching because teaching matters. Teaching affects living. She's dragging them into things that are an abomination to me. So come on, let's ask God today. God, fill me with your word and give me discernment of both false, teach false teaching and false prophets and prophetesses. Some of might say, oh, that's so negative and critical. You're being hypercritical. Hey, Jesus said, I fault you for this. You let that woman teach. What are you letting her teach? Well, everyone has their view. You know, that's I heard this the other day. Our person, this person's coming to give, what was it, a court case or... No, some sensational thing in the newspapers. He gave his truth. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There is no his truth. There's truth. I don't have my truth, you have your truth, and they don't correspond. There's truth. Let's search for it. Let's love it. And let's God, ask God to keep us in the path of truth. Amen.